morning, this is Troy from the do-it-yourself world and the off-grid project. I um, was really busy recently and I oiled some of the walls. This entire wall is done all the way to the floor, all the way down to baby cat. Little vulture, I don't know what you're looking at. But I oiled all that and um, I, ha I can't do this one yet because that board's in the way. I oiled these boards here all the way across and oiled some other things here and there because the wood is starting to dry due to the low humidity in here it's 25 percent and I was reading that between 30 and 50 percent is healthy humidity and below 30 is unhealthy and above 50 is unhealthy and so I have unhealthy humidity in here so um, that's not cool Weather station is working well, but I have no power to get it online right now. I have no power for anything. I um, work on the table. It's a bit sloppy, but there's my office for now. Uh, that you will see the table has been moved. I now have that ta that window freed up, and the baby cat can go up on that ledge. That's where she sits a lot to look outside. I have the towel on the windowsill because there's a power cord running down to power my computer. And that power cord I showed you a while back. All right now, I'm running on DC power. My DC generator is running because the RV batteries are dead, deader than dead. Oh, well, my my friend has arrived, so we're gonna take off and go into town and look for some scrap batteries. I'll explain later. Well, this is Troy from the Do-It-Yourself World and the Off-Grid Project. It is now a quarter to five in the evening. It's getting dark. And I have done nothing with my day so far but for running the roads. The RV battery bank is destroyed. I now have confirmed um, proof from Advance Auto. I um, kept... For example, this morning I ran my DC generator for about three hours while I was working on the computer and the batteries were at 12.9 or something like that. The solar panels were pulling in some power, not much of course in the morning because there's no sunlight reaching them yet, but it was pulling around 35 watts I think from the light filtering through the trees. When I shut down the DC generator, now we're talking 300 amps of energy was pumped into those 600 amp hour batteries, which should have brought them up even from 50% um, discharge, which is considered fully discharged, essentially. <clears throat> anyway, when I, um, I left the house and went on the road, I'll get back to that, when I got back, the batteries were down to 12.1 volts with nothing on them, no drain. So they're self-discharging. I have separated them all. I have brought them all up to a full charge, separated them, come back, and in the morning they were all discharged on their own. So <clears throat> there is a, a drain. They're not holding a charge anymore. And I talked to Advanced Auto this morning, and they said that these batteries, now here's what confirms my thoughts and my, my actual evidence from three years of using them. These particular golf cart batteries from Advanced Auto, the guy said, are not for cold weather use. He says they do not perform in cold weather. He said that on the phone, so I wish I had recorded the conversation. But please trust me and take my word when I, when the guy from Advanced Auto said these are not to be used in cold weather. These are golf cart summer weather batteries. Now the Trojan T105s, I've heard a lot of good reports about them. But the Advanced Auto batteries, forget it. It just backs up what I have seen through three years of use with those batteries. Um, these particular batteries are only a year and a half old. Now since they're just over the warranty period I talked to the guy and I said well what am I gonna do because I mean I, um, I don't, I'm living off the grid on these batteries and 
I said, is there anything you can do for me? He said, well, bring them in. We'll put them on the machine and run them through their, uh, they have a 30-minute analyzer that puts a charge into them and then tests them and analyzes them. We'll put them on the machine, each one, one at a time, and test them all. And then um, see if we can work you out some sort of a guarantee. So I'm going to take those batteries to Advance Auto. And um, I was looking online. They don't have anything, though, sadly, that I would prefer to replace these with. So at best, maybe I'll get replacements of what I have. Um, but I wouldn't want to use them for off-grid um, winter use. They're just no good for that. Not at all. Unless I keep them indoors and keep them warm. So that confirms just the evidence, just confirms the, the data that I have seen living in that RV in the last, well, in a camper in the RV the last three winters. So <clears throat> then I spent all day today driving around looking for scrap batteries that I could at least get in limp mode for now. Because if I take these out, I won't have anything. Right now, at least, I can run the DC generator into those batteries, and I have an extension cord running into the tiny house where I do my computer work. And if I take out those batteries, I won't have that buffer, because that's a 100 amp hour, or a 100 amp um, alternator. So those batteries take that, buffer it for me, then the inverter can give me the AC power, which I'm running the laptop and TV on, to do my computer work. So I need a, uh, batteries for the interim, and I was running around looking for forklift batteries at the scrapyards, and that's why I was gone all day. I had, I arrived at the one scrap metal yard where I bought the batteries that are in the tiny home that are powering these LED lights. These batteries are, I bought them two years ago, and they were um, taken to the scrapyard as junk back then. And they're still working, two years later. And these batteries were taken in as scrap. I bought them for scrap price, and I'm still using them. And those batteries I have actually left for months at a time, untouched and unused and uncharged, and neglected them fully, and they still work. So it gives you an idea that there is a difference in quality in batteries. There is a massive difference in quality in, in batteries. And these are actual deep cycle solar batteries. Uh, forgive my jackets there, it bothers me that my jackets are hanging on a board. I don't have any place to put them yet. But anyway, there is a difference. So the, uh, the advanced auto golf cart batteries in the RV, summer only. Do not perform in cold weather, confirmed by the store themselves. I also called Johnson Controls today to see if they could do anything for me, and they said, no, that's a manufacturer-specific battery, or specifically manufactured for uh, Advanced Auto, and they um, are the ones that have to talk to me and help me out. And I asked them if they had any knowledge of the batteries not performing in winter, and the lady I talked to had no idea, but that doesn't mean a thing for sure. But Advanced Auto certainly did say these are not winter batteries. They are no good in cold weather. They will not perform. So now I know, you know, it's, it's backed up, like I said. So I drove around looking for the forklift batteries. I went to the very same yard where these came from. And I saw them loading a massive amount of forklift batteries onto a truck. And I wanted them, but they said they were already sold. I was just too late. Just missed them. There were like eight forklift batteries being loaded up, already sold. All of their batteries, though, I guess, because they made some kind of a 5,000 pound deal. Or no, 50,000 50, pounds of batteries. Anyway, all of the batteries were bundled up. So I missed out. So my friend, he was running the roads. He was running the roads, doing his scrapyard hauling anyway, and that's how he makes his his money. So I rode with him all afternoon, and we went from place to place to place. He was looking for scrap metal. I was looking for batteries. Um, no luck, not today. So here I am. It's almost five o'clock in the evening. Afternoon. It's only it's only five o'clock right now, and. Um, 
it's dark and I haven't done any work at the homestead yet and um, the batteries that I am using although they are running these LED lights they're only good for uh, a couple of few hours they're not very good anymore but they are running my LED lights but that's all they can handle they're two 75 amp hour batteries but they're ancient now I'm happy to have the light yeah we're at 12.5 volts right now with those three lights running about 30 40 minutes or so um, and that's uh, three watts so it's a quarter of an amp uh, these batteries don't handle very much anymore but they are cold it has not gotten over 45 degrees tonight and it's going to be 20 or today it hasn't gotten over 45 it's going to be 20 tonight so these batteries are cold which does reduce their usable capacity 12.5 is not the, the greatest so I'll be shutting off this light soon so that I don't um, cause them any harm <clears throat> actually I'll do it now I only use the lights when I'm using the kitchen or taking measurements or doing some work but I'm very very sparing because they are tired so yeah that's the summary of the, the off-grid homestead right now I don't have any power unless I'm running the DC generator and um, if I take those batteries out they're gonna be gone for a couple days and then I won't have anything at all so I'm thinking about using the I might end up using the Harbor Freight Generator, but it's filthy energy. Dirty, dirty, sketchy, really sketchy energy. So I'm going to have to run that into a computer um, UPS, a computer backup, which will filter and smooth out the energy for use um, as I'm working on the, uh, the computer. So, now the thing about this is my DC generator runs for five hours on a half a gallon of gas and puts out direct DC into the battery bank of the RV which I can then convert to D AC to run my laptop and my TV and I charge my devices off it as well while I'm running it and my battery packs for tools and everything else I run while that's running um, the Harbor Freight Generator runs for five hours on a half gallon of gas but also uses um, two cycle oil which is an extra expense so I prefer to use a DC generator and the Harbor Freight generator is very very glitchy energy it is very um, unclean I, I, it's it's not a clean output it's uh, w when you're running uh, lights you can see them flicker it definitely has to be smoothed out to be able to be used with any decent equipment so Anyway, I would like to work on some cabinets in here yet this evening, and I may end up just bringing the tools in and working in here um, because it's already getting pretty dark out and it is freezing cold. And I really want to get this other cabinet done here and those over there if I have enough wood left. So we'll see how it goes here. Otherwise, I might fire up the generator and use some lights outside to, just to get the work done. Now we'll see how it looks. We'll make my decision and see. I wanted to show you something pretty cool. Now this is without checking beforehand. I just mounted these things, period. We have level. See that? Nice, huh? Look at that. Perfectly level. Isn't that nice? That is happy. That's just mounting them on the, uh, the, the, the wall by hand alone. So that's a good feeling. So what I've got to do, see there's a dip right here. And what I've got to do is I've got to make the next cabinet. And I think I'm just going to come straight across like this. Flush with this. But this is sort of sloped. I don't know how. Yeah, I do. See that, that piece up here. This one here is actually smaller than an average 2x4. I don't know how that happened. That's straight from, from Lowe's. Or is that the one? Yeah, that's from Lowe's. And it's a little smaller than your average 2x4. Here, that's flush to the 2x4. Here, there's a gap. So this is then off in this corner. Because when you, it was nailed to that one, it, it, it put it at an angle. So that throws everything off. Um, not cool. So anyway, I'm going to have to... I'm going to take my level and try to come across here 
with the level, okay, and then try to take a measurement from there to there so I know how big to make the cabinet. Because I do not want to have it off here. I want it flush with the bottom. See how this is a nice straight line? I want that to continue to be straight. Um, but I want to bolt into this up here, screw in. So this is going to be tricky. But I'm going to try. And it's freezing cold, windy. It's going to be 20 tonight. It's already, it's already down to 40. Uh, and that with the wind, it makes it very uncomfortable. But I want to try to get this cabinet done. So for now, I don't know. I think at least right now while there's still some light, I'm going to try to cut the plywood pieces. And then I can do the framing by LED light outside later. And then maybe assemble it indoors. So let me see what I can get done.
Okay, there's the base for my shelving. So, it shows you it's a little bit awkward working in the dark because there's shadows all over the place. And uh, I gotta use my headlamp to see what I'm doing so I can do the measurements and cuts. So it's, uh, it's not too nice and it is freezing cold. It's gonna get a deep freeze tonight and that's gonna be the end of the garden. But I'm gonna try to keep going and get this, uh, this, these shelves cut and put together tonight. certainly won't be able to call my cabinets weak maybe overbuilt and strong but not weak so uh, I'm finishing the top and bottom and then I'll make measurements on how much I got to do to get the uh, the height and I'll cut the four legs in the middle shelves and uh, take it on inside I am after all assembling it outside I didn't think I would but gives you an idea uh, how dark it is Let's get my headlight off the picture I got security lights, but it's uh, otherwise it's really pitch black out here. Besides the security light kicking on. Anyway, I'm gonna keep on at it. It's cold. Wow, it's cold. It's gonna freeze tonight. I can feel it. So I've got the framing for the shelf together. Let's see what we've got here. Ah, oh, awkward. Oh, look at that. Look here, perfectly flush. Oops. Uh. Um, that's tight up here. That's gonna be flush. Yeah, it's awkward to hold. Uh. It's gonna work. I want that side in the back. Okay, the dirty side will be in the back. It's gonna work. Uh. Sure hope you can see up here what I got going on. Okay, there's my new shelf. Uh, which way is the back side? There's the back. And up. Okay. Now I got it all together. I gotta make sure it fits right, of course. Okay. Uh. Oh, come on. Okay, it's going to be awkward placing this. That looks straight, though. Okay. Hmm. Okay. So, right to the top. Right to the top. Oh, to get my other screws. Be right back. And am I recording this? Oh, it's warm in here after being outside. Really warm in here. It's not warm. Okay. Um, 
Oh, perfect. That's all right. Wait a minute. Let me mark. Two screws started. Oh, I think that's off. Never mind a bit. Oh, this is awkward. Pre-drilling through the plywood is quite awkward. Way off. Okay. Oh, it's warm. Oh. Oh. It's a fifty degree difference from outside to inside. Cat's favorite squeaky toy. When I met this, why don't you go? Okay, there it is. In the stud. All right. Uh, I want these lined up absolutely. Uh, no. Eh? Okay, right there. Yeah, baby cat looking on. What do you think, baby cat? Are we doing all right? Huh? Oh, she's not interested. Well, there it is. I'll put a couple more screws in. I've got a nice straight line all the way across. Nice and level and even and flush. I've got a little bit of spice rack storage up there, I guess. Um, all the way across, actually. I've got some storage area. And that is, after a couple more screws, going to be seriously, firmly part of the house. It's really going to be a strong part of the house. So, I'm happy. It's looking good. Well, there's one wall of cabinets done. Alright, I'm just going to finish screwing that together and then be done with it. And then later I'll put a shelf up here probably in the next day or so and, and then I'll be uh, putting on the the trim the side pieces of this and the front trim of the cabinets and then eventually making doors and I've still got to put the middle shelves in all the way across on this one that's looking like a kitchen nice